So before we go over limits, we need to cover the laws of limits. And so we have some restrictions for these rules to be true. Um, C is a constant. F of X and G of X both exist. Very, very important. If F of X and G of X exist, then all of these are true. So this means that if you were to take the limit of the sum of two functions, it would be the same as the limit of each function individually added together. Same with the difference. Same with the constant. Look, you can pull the constant out of the limit because it's not affecting the limit. It's a constant. And then if you multiply, you can multiply, you can divide, you can use powers, you can use roots. There's a lot of different rules, but f of x and g of x both must exist before you can do any of these. So let's try this. So let's say that the limit of f of x as x approaches c is 7, and g of x would be 3 with the same x approaching c. They also both have to approach the same number. So if f of x exists and g of x exists, see we have a value of 7 and a value of 3. That means that these two both exist. That means we could take this limit now and go f of x times the limit as x approaches c of g of x. It allows us to multiply because they both exist. So this would be 7 times 3, which is 21. And since they both exist here, we could also do a subtraction. And so f of x is 7, g of x is 3, we subtract them and we get 4. So you get the idea. So how it works really, really quick is we know that f and g both exist. Their limits exist as x approaches c. So we could just now plug each of these in. So the limit of f of x as x approaches c times the limit as x approaches c of g of x minus the limit as x approaches c of f of x all over the limit as x approaches c of g of x minus the limit. So it doesn't matter how complicated it is. As long as each of the parts exist, you're allowed to find the limit of each part and then find out what it is. And it makes sense. If, if this exists, then as x approaches c, f of x is going to some number, g of x is going to some number, and so on and so on. So f of x would be 7 times g, which is 3, minus 7 over 3 minus 7. Let's verify this because there's a lot to plug in. f is 7, g is 3, f is 7, g is 3, and f is 7. So we end up with this, which is 21 minus 7 over negative 4, which is negative 14 over negative 4, sorry, positive 14 over negative 4, which is negative 7 halves. So hopefully you get the idea both of them exist, we're good to go. You can take the limit of the parts. So exist, take limit of parts. All right, so let's look at it graphically now to see some situations where it may work, it may not work. So let's try this. The limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x. So we're going to go to negative 2. So we're looking at here. And so again, you have to approach for limits. You have to approach from the left and the right to the same value. So we are approaching left and right. So for f, that's the pink one, we're approaching left and right. And for the green, we're approaching left and right. And so even remember this, this value is, is defined at a different number. We don't take that number. We take what it's approaching. So coming in from the left and the right, it's 1, right? Okay, so the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2 is 1. What we're doing here is we're saying this exists. We cannot split these up into a subtraction and use the constant until we show that they exist. So number 2 now. Let's try our blue. Limit as x approaches negative 2 of g of x. Well, that value is defined at that number at negative 2, so we already know it's negative 1 right here. That would be negative 1. So we get 1 for f, negative 1 for g. They both exist, so now we can split them up using our limit laws. So this would be f of x minus, and then the 5 is a constant. So that was the law up here <clears throat> where we take the constant out. So if you have a c, you put it in front of the limit. So it becomes 5 limit as x approaches negative 2 g of x. And there we go. And now we can plug them in. So we get positive 1 for f of x negative 1 
for g of x. So this is 1 plus 5, which is 6. So our limit <coughs> as x approaches negative 2 of f of x minus 5g of x is 6. Okay, so now let's try another one. And this one's going to be the special one, that one that you want to star because it's special. So if we approach 1 now, we're coming in from the left and the right on 1, you can already see that for g, it does not exist. So the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x does not exist. That means that we can't just split it. So no limit as x approaches 1 of f of x times the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x. We cannot do this. This is a we cannot do. Does not mean we're done though. What we now need to do though is basically split it into two. What we're going to do is a left hand limit. So we're going to come into the left side of each. And then we're also going to do a right hand limit. So we're going to come into the right of each. And then by doing that, you can see that the left hand limit, it exists for both f and g. And the right hand limit exists for both f and g. So this will allow us to split them up. So limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x is equal to. And so coming in from the left, we get 2. And then the limit as x approaches 1 left of g of x is equal to negative 2. So now they both exist. That means we can use our limit law. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x times g of x would equal the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x times the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of g of x. And so the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x is 2 times g, which is negative 2, giving us negative 4. Okay, now we can do the other one. So let's do that one in black. So the limit now, the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x is what? And the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of g of x is what? So coming in from the right to f, we also get 2. And then coming in from the right of g, we get negative 1. So they both exist. We can say the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x times g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x times the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of g of x. Maybe we should have brackets around these, but you get the idea. Okay, then so f is 2, g is negative 1, that gives us negative 2, and so now you can say the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x times g of x does not exist because these two are not the same. So the right hand limit is not the same as the left hand limit, therefore our limit does not exist. Now that doesn't mean this is going to happen each time. So if you get a D and E here for one of these functions, it could be a situation where it still works. So if they had both come into some negative value and over here, this one doesn't work. But when you multiply them together, let's just say that this one had came down to a positive one. That would have been one times negative two. So if we had this instead coming here, right? And then there's a dot here like that. And that one has a closed dot. Then you would see that it would be one times negative two, which is negative two. And negative one times two, which is negative two. Therefore, the limit would be negative two. So you do have to split them into left and right to show that they don't exist, and then they don't exist. But these are your limit laws. So if they exist, split them up, find the parts of each part, and that is your limit. Thank you.